even a, a smile, um, um, a smile, a nod, uh, you know, it kind of allows me to know that you're they were engaging with the material. But if you don't want to be recorded, completely understand that as well. So we'll go ahead and get started with this. And welcome to our dining etiquette presentation, as Amber mentioned. Um, my name is Carmen Bender. Um, I'm, again, just thrilled to be here with you all this evening. Um, we're going to talk through some things from the standpoint of a professional in a dinner interview setting. And I have some tips as well from a corporate host standpoint as well. And career services host these events because honestly, the more confident you are, the more comfortable those around you will feel, okay? So um, there's a recent example, a few, a few years ago, we had a student in one of the dinners and I, I think honestly, kind of the look of like, I will never use this. That, this is great, the food is wonderful, but I might not use this ever in my life. Well, lo and behold, this, this student went on to um, have a career in media, worked for a radio station, and very quickly was invited to a black tie event through the Kansas City Chiefs. So you just never know. You never know what your career, what path you're going to go down, and what opportunities you might have. And so I just wanted you to be, be open to those, to those experiences. If nothing else, I have two general rules that I would like you to remember. One would be try not to draw any unnecessary attention to yourself. And two is I would break any rule to have the people around me feel comfortable, okay? And if we were here in person doing this, we would have five courses this evening. We would have a soup, a sorbet, a salad, a main course and a dessert. So just a little teaser there, when we get to do this in person again, food is fantastic, okay? So the first thing you're gonna, you would do is to take your cue from your corporate, from your corporate host. And I'm gonna show you a little place, a place setting here. Can you all see that okay? The place setting. What I'm gonna have you do, because I don't know about you, but this is a couple more maybe a little bit more silverware pieces than are at my dining table at home when I'm serving a meal to my family. So you might be wondering, I'm not even sure what would be mine in, a, in, a, in an instance like this. And I'm going to have you take your four fingers, probably not in an interview, but this is a good time to practice this. Uh, take your, your pointer fingers and put them on your thumbs and you have a B and a D. So you would know, for example, this would be your bread plate if you're sitting here at table so at spot 21. This would be your bread plate. These are your forks. This is your napkin and your drinks and your knife. And so everything kind of out like in front of you like this would all be, would all be yours. Just, just in case, <laughs> I'd like to cover that just in, just in case, okay? Um, anything uh, for courses or greater would be considered formal or fine dining. But these manners are gonna apply no matter what, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do as you get seated is take your cue from your corporate host. And they're probably, they're gonna grab their napkin. And I, I have one with me here. Um, you're gonna, you would fold it, you would take it off the table and fold it in such a way in half like this. And then put the fold towards your belly button. And I've seen people who sometimes then proceed to sit four or five inches away from the table, but I would ask to, to scoot up closer to the table as close as comfortably possible so you don't spill down your, down your lap. Again, that whole not drawing unnecessary attention to yourself, okay? Uh, your napkin, these napkins, these are, these are meant to be used. So anytime before you take a drink, I would recommend that you, that you at least blot your lips. And the reason for that is that you don't want any food particles that are on your, on your mouth to be now on your glass for the, whole, for the world to see. So that's why we, that's why we recommend that. It's meant, meant to be used, okay? Um, you have soup. The first course, like I mentioned, if we were here in person, would be a soup course, and um, it may be served in a bowl or in um, or in a cup. And sometimes it's even served then on top of, on a plate. And that plate is called a service or a charger plate. And it, what the the purpose that it holds is that any time any silverware, but your sp your soup spoon is in your soup bowl and in your mouth we want to avoid putting it back on the linen, on the tablecloth. And so you can rest your soup spoon there. If there is not a, a plate underneath your bowl, you can put your, your you can rest your uh, spoon in your cup and that's in your soup bowl and that's just fine as well. A little counterintuitive, I don't know about you, but usually when I'm eating soup, I'm bringing it to me like, like this. 
But in an instance like this, it's probably better to take it away from you. And simply because you have an opportunity to remove any excess soup off your spoon before bringing it to you so you don't run, you know, run the risk of, of um, wearing your soup. So gently, if you can, you get your soup on your spoon, glide it against the, the lip of the bowl for this away from you and then bring it to your mouth. Um, if you can also again sit upright because you don't want to be leaning into, you know, leaning into your soup like that as much as as much as possible. You can, if if crackers are served with this, you can break them in half, you can dunk your crackers. Again, I just would try to, to do anything that would not would not uh, draw unnecessary attention to yourself. Okay. If it's too hot, um, you can just let it rest. You don't need to, to stir it. You don't need to, to blow on it or put ice cubes in it, anything along those lines. Just let it rest and, um, and that, when that would be, would be just fine. With introduction, so you may be in a networking event or in an interview or you have several people um, on the team interviewing you. You can introduce yourself to anyone at any given point in time. You do not have to wait until someone introduces you. So what that would look like under non-COVID circumstances, um, you, you could even say, how do you do? I am, and I would say Carmen Bender, um, and then extend your right hand for a handshake. And again, if we were here in person, I would kind of coach you a little bit on how to do a, pro a proper handshake. It's, a, it's such an intimate, it's just a nice connection between two people. And I've talked to uh, experts in the industry and they do think that it will be coming back. The handshakes are not, I don't think, gone, gone forever. Um, but what you're looking for is to have the web of your hand interlock with the web of the other person's hand and truly just a quick two or three pumps and then let and then let go. Okay, and you can really tell a lot about a person. Uh, I think we probably all had maybe somebody offer you just like a dainty, maybe a couple fingers and it's like what you know, I'm not sure exactly what that you're trying to say here. But those things send signals to people about about you and uh, handshakes have been around for a very long time and I, I hopefully hopefully they'll be coming back pretty soon. In the meantime, people have asked like, what are we doing in the meantime? Because uh, we are, we're missing out on that. So what I've seen people do is kind of a little bit of a namaste. So you can cup your own hands together. You can kind of just do a, a bow or you can even just extend your own arms out like that. We just want to acknowledge a person's presence is really right now the, the best we can, the best we can do with that. Um, always stand. So if you're seated and you're meeting somebody for the first time, please always stand um, to shake hands or to, to for that greeting. It shows uh, just shows respect. It's a it's a just nice way to greet someone. Uh, and again, you can introduce yourself to anyone at any given point in time. When you're making introductions, it can be a little bit trickier. Um, your brain seems to be working just fine right up until the time where it's time to you make introductions and you forget somebody's name. If that were to happen, you could always say, have you two met? And again, that then opens up, the, opens up the opportunity there for people to say, oh, hi, I'm Carmen, pleased to meet you. And then they, from there, they may take the hint to, to introduce themselves. But if everything is working and you remember people's names, you'll wanna start with a person who is the guest or the outsider to your organization. So think of this even in your own home. Somebody's come into dinner or um, as a student and you're in your organization, as a guest speaker or somebody who's coming in, you will say that person's name first. So for example, even though this is just as much Dr. Best's university as it is, as it is anybody else's, him coming into my office, into our office, I would say his name first. So it doesn't have anything to do with titles um, or male, female, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It has to do with who is the guest of your organization or the guest to, to your meeting or whatever it might be. And you try to say the person's name twice. So I would say, for example, um, Dr. Best, this is Candace. Candace, this is Dr. Best. So they have an opportunity to hear both names twice. Okay. So it's, um, some people will avoid making introductions because they're afraid they're going to mess it up. And I can tell you, we'd much rather you mess it up than to uh, than avoid um, trying to make an introduction. Okay. If you were to sit at a table like this one for an interview, if you have eight or fewer people at your table, you will wait till everyone has their food before you start eating. If there are nine or more at your table, you'll wait until at least a few people around you have their, their food as well. 
so you're not the most ravenous, you don't look like the most ravenous person at the table ready to, ready to dig in. Because again, that's not how you want to be, it's not how you want to be remembered, okay? Um, with this, for this place setting as an example, um, we start with the outside and we work our way in. So if, if you were to sit down at a table like this and you notice two forks, you would notice then one is probably one is your salad fork and then one is for your main course, just to kind of give you an eye an idea of what that what that looks like. Um, a few things um, to mention here, um, salt and pepper, let's say somebody across the table from you asks for the salt and the salt and pepper are right in front of you. They get passed together. I would grab them by the middle or by their base and we typically um, pass things counterclockwise or to the right. Um, again, of course, using common sense, if the person immediately to your left asks for them, you do not have to send them all the way around the table uh, to get to the person immediately on your left. And the same goes also with um, the bread basket. So if the bread basket, if there's a bread basket on the table, um, before you pick it up and you get bread yourself, it's, it's just gracious, it's good manners to offer to the person to your left and then passing it around the table to the right, okay? Um, when ordering, you might go to a restaurant and not have an idea of you know, what to order. And often, just so you know, your host will probably order last. So it's not like you can say, well, I'm just gonna have what they're having. So you, you may need to ask the host for recommendations or the wait staff for recommendations, and that is just fine. Um, if you do need to make more than two or three alterations to an item, to a menu item, I would recommend ordering something different. Again, that's not how you want to be remembered. It's like, oh, you mean the person who ordered extra this and hold that and this was on the side and that's again not how you want to be want to be remembered. So order something that you're that you're familiar with um, and that you do not need to make too many alterations to. And we typically only send something back if it was prepared, if it was improperly prepared. Okay, we don't want to be um, again. That's not the signal that you want to that you want to send. A lot of businesses will host an interview over a meal because they want to see how you're going to enter. You know, they will they want to see how you will represent their company and how you would interact with their clients. And you can again tell a lot about a person the way they interact with things that aren't going well um, and how they treat the wait staff. All of those things can can um, can help a, a person decide whether or not you're going to be a good fit for their organization. Um, I do have a quick video after your um, after your soup would be a sorbet and I have just a real quick video that I that I like to share with you as kind of a real quick funny video from the Princess Diaries. It kind of highlights a little bit of um, um, a little bit of sorbet, but then also another 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 point with that as well. So if you give me just one second here, let me get I'll get that up and going. Between the courses to cleanse the palate. Mm. Yep. She will. Mm. 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 She didn't realize it was frozen. What should we do? Well, we should take that much too. Just do the same thing. You are acting like monkeys. I like to show that for a couple reasons. Uh, one, a little bit about what a sorbet might be. It is going to be cold. It will be small. You do not have to eat every last bite of everything on your plate, just to, to mention that. Um, it, knowing that it is usually cold, I probably wouldn't take that big of a bite. But also what I like about that video is that it highlights, you know, when those dignitaries said, let's do the same thing, kind of really just illustrates point number, point number two of doing breaking a rule to help people around you feel comfortable it's just being being gracious in an instant like in an instance like that instead of making her feel uncomfortable and further highlighting that she was doing the wrong thing 
they took that opportunity to help her feel more welcome. So just a, I like to use that as a quick high as a quick highlight there. Um, when you are ordering, when you're um, sitting down for an interview over a meal, I could, will tell you it could be over lunch, 10 to 15 minutes before you get your food. And over a dinner, you could expect upward toward 30 minutes before you get your food. So I would recommend having some things to talk about while you're while you're waiting while you're waiting on that uh, on your food to get there. So I have some conversation starters for you that I'm hopeful hopefully will be helpful. So um, I will tell you in Missouri though we can usually talk about the weather. Tried to throw something different other than the weather out there, although that's usually plenty to talk about. Um, some conversation topics. Number one, who who is their mentor? What obstacles have they overcome? What are they most proud of in their career? How did they get started in this line of business? Where did they go to school? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily refrain from asking like, what do you do or uh, where are you from? But you could ask questions like, what are you working on these days? Or what was it like in the town or city you grew, you grew up? So I'll say some of those again. Who is their mentor? What obstacles have they overcome? What are they most proud of? How did they get started in this line of business? Where did they go to school? What are you working on these days? And what was it like in the town or city where you grew up? Oh, I will tell you that no one ever listened themselves out of a job, but it is pretty easy to talk yourself out of a job. So if you find you're in a position where you're doing most of the talking, it's completely okay to stop acknowledge it and then ask and open a new question to the person sitting there at the table with you okay completely fine um i would recommend that you and you all know this but to be sincere in your compliments and to not negate them when they come your way if somebody does compliment something just graciously accept it and then and then move on and also be sincere in the compliments that you give i will tell you that no matter how prepared we feel going into an interview especially over a dinner where you might be a little nervous as much as, as prepared as we might feel you may very well spill something drop something or say the wrong thing it, it might happen i will tell you not not two or three months after i received my etiquette training i was at an event and there were i mean it was a small room 10 15 people in the room with our former president of our university here and um, food with hors d'oeuvres were being served and I dropped something on the floor. I mean, just out of nowhere and I froze. And I'm like, I'm even trained on how to do this. And I still just froze for a quick second. So I will tell you that it's completely natural. So just kind of think through those things. But I will tell you um, a few minutes in to your conversation, if you make a mistake, they're, they're, they're already starting to, to get an idea of who this person is. Who are you and are you gonna be a good fit? So if you say you're sorry one time and move on, that will say more than apologizing three or four more times. I have a really good friend who will, she'll tell me, Carmen, you are no more sorry your second or third time apologizing than you were the first. Just let it go and move and move on. And that says a lot about a lot about you. If you do, I will tell you, if you do drop silverware when you're at a restaurant, it's okay to grab the attention of a wait staff and ask for a new knife or fork or spoon, whatever it might be. Now, if however, you're in your supervisor's home and you drop your fork, please pick it up. <laughs> please pick up after yourself, okay? Um, we are, you all just so much more relaxed as a society in these rules than we used to be. And so um, things that used to be a little more formal are now a little bit more relaxed. So if you can, if you can cut either a salad or a piece of meat even with a fork, it's okay to do so. Okay, you don't feel like you have to go with a fork and knife every single every single time. I would ask you to be aware. Some of us just know like, oh, wow, I'm a fast eater or oh, I, I tend to eat a little more slowly. Just be kind of aware of that as you're as you're in a room and in an interview setting with with other people that you're kind of keeping pace with um, with the people around you. Uh, with bread again, like if there's a bread basket on the table as you're as you're taking a piece of as you're taking some bread and passing around the table. With bread, you'll want to break it and then butter it one bite at a time. And again, then offer it to the person to your left before you take some yourself. And with business cards, I can tell you the first time you, when you get your business cards for the first time, it's, it can be a big deal. 
So I would recommend you know, spending just a few dollars on Amazon and grabbing a, um, a business card holder because you won't want to hand out business cards that are soiled in any way, shape or form or bent too badly. Um, and you please don't, don't hand them out at a dinner. It's just not an appropriate time to hand out a business card at a dinner, okay? Uh, I would recommend it, you all know this as well, but leave your cell phone in the car. Even, even having it on vibrate can be just enough of a distraction that that's not really what you're, what you're wanting to do, okay? You can bring a briefcase or a handbag, but not both, and please don't ever put them on the table. And depending on the restaurant, they may check your, you know, your coat and your bag um, as, you, as you arrive, okay? When you get a job, so I'm just you know, moving forward a little bit, you already have the job, congratulations. When you have it with a job and you have an invite from your supervisor to dinner, it's called the command performance. The expectation is that you go. The trick with that is they may say, we're having dinner from six to eight. So what, that doesn't mean show up at five or 5.15 and hang out till nine, that means six to eight. So that's uh, really the key with that is not to overstay your welcome with that. We do, again, if we were normally, if we were in person, we would have an opportunity to, um, during your main course, have uh, highlight two different styles of eating with your with fork and knife. And I'll, I'll go through these with you because they're, kind of, they're kind of fun and it's just good information to know. A lot of us, if you grew up in the United States, you're very comfortable with your with the American style of eating. So you cut your for, your food, your knife is in your dominant hand, your fork is in your non-dominant hand, you put your knife down, you swap hands, and the tines go up into your mouth with your dominant hand. On the, the picture on the left here shows a what would signal to you the wait staff, please don't take my plate yet, I'm still eating. It's um, the fork is across, the knife blade is down. Um, but it again signals to the wait staff that you're not ready to uh, for them to take your plate when you are done this the 10 to 4 with a knife on top does signal to the wait staff that you are finished with your with your food something to try and again if you were in person you have an opportunity to try this is the continental or european style and it's a little bit different it's more efficient because you're not switch uh, swapping hands with your fork and knife so the knife stays in your dominant hand, your fork stays in your non-dominant hand, and the, the tines go into your mouth, um, uh, the fork goes in your mouth, tines down is what, that, is what that looks like. If you get an opportunity next time you're in your apartment making dinner or in the dining hall or going out to, going out to eat, um, I would give it a try if you, if you think about it. It's just something that it's nice to try and it's, um, it's good to know what people are doing in other, other places around, around the world. Along that line too, if you are traveling or you're doing business overseas, it's very worthwhile to look into the culture and the customs of where you're going because our, some of our rules do not apply in, in different places. So just to be aware of that. But the inverted V here in the continental style, again, tells the wait staff that you're, that you're resting and that you're, they're, you're not ready for them to take your plate just yet. Again, the, con the continental, um, I'm finished 10 to four, um, across the plate says, uh, I'm finished, please take my plate. Please and thank you, I'll tell you all, never go out of style. So every time the wait staff comes, they either take your plate or bring you another plate, absolutely okay to say thank you. Even though with multiple courses, you might be saying it quite a bit. I'm sure they don't get tired of hearing it and it, it just does not, it does not go out of style, okay? You can cut with your food, especially for example, like meat, up to three bites at a time is, is absolutely okay. And again, the knife blade stays towards the center. And that's actually kind of an old, um, um, I think maybe even middle ages, go back to the middle ages. If, if uh, somebody sat beside you and they had the knife blade out, you were thought that you could be a dangerous person. So that's why it's just one of those customary, they just kind of stayed with our, with our etiquette rules that the knife blade stays towards the center of the plate. Um, a couple of things that you, sometimes I'm asked about um, alcohol, like ordering an alcoholic beverage. Um, what if uh, the person, your host, just, just absolutely insists that you have something from the bar? I would say, please not on the first interview. It is not, not a great idea. Um, I heard a story recently about a summer intern. At the very end of the summer, a star intern, very end of the summer, the CEO took them, all the interns, out for dinner and drinks. And the, this intern ordered an a Long Island iced tea and then ordered two more. And 
did not go, it did not go well. It was singing a happy birthday to the CEO. It was not their birthday. And this person did not get the job. There was a job at the, on the line and uh, time came for it. She did not get the job. Please don't let that be the reason that you do not get a job. So please avoid alcohol in your first interview. If you do feel that pressure, you can order something non-alcoholic from the bar. That's a good alternative um, as well. So please, nothing alcoholic on your first on your first um, interview. You will have an idea that the, that the interview is winding down when the when your host takes their napkin from their lap and puts it on the table and kind of you, even that just a little bit of that nonverbal of kind of pushing away from the table a little bit. It will send the signal to you that you're you're wrapping up. Um, I would recommend at that point within 24 hours making sure you have a thank you card sent to them you know they are getting ready to make a decision very quickly it's okay to email but i would also i would always follow up with a with a handwritten email and you think of that even or a handwritten card and i say that you think of it from your perspective as well you can print off an email and it does not have the same impact as a handwritten as a handwritten card um some questions that i'm that i'm typically asked um, for example, if you had um, either a fishbone or gristle, um, you can remove that with these three fingers and you can just in your mouth, remove it, put it on your plate. Sometimes it's nice. You can even use uh, your bread plate. Um, again, the idea with that is just to be as discreet as possible um, when, doing, when doing that. If you need to get up, if you need to excuse yourself, you do not need to let anybody know why. You just, just say, I'm, I'll be right back, or please excuse me. You'll take your napkin, and ideally you've been using it up to this point, but you will fold it in such a way that any, um, any food particles, nothing would be showing. You fold it and you put it on your place setting in front of you, not on your chair, but on your place setting. Excuse yourself and then come back, and once you're back, then put your, your napkin back in your lap. Um, if you do, like I said, if you do drop something on the floor, it's okay to grab the attention of the wait staff. And honestly, the, the host may have very well set everything up that they've already paid and everything's already squared away when, at the, from the very beginning. So you would not need to, um, to even offer to pay. And if that was an expectation, they would let you know that ahead of time. But they, should, they invited you to this interview, they should be, they should be paying. Um, we, I do want to just kind of give you a little bit of a teaser here that we do my our plan our hope is to have this in person in february if everything everything works out um the food is spectacular hopefully the jokes go a little bit better than they do than they do in person or than up through zoom um but we we have some time for um for some questions i did have um I did want to let you know that I know right now there's probably not a, a lot of in-person networking things that are happening right now, but it's still, you can still connect with people, uh, whether that be looking for Chamber of Commerce events, alumni events, virtual career fairs, those types of things. It's still, still okay to, to reach out and network uh, with people and try to make those, try to make those connections now. Um, and Amber, do we have, do we have some questions that from the group? Not yet, but yeah, if anybody okay. has any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, Carmen, I do have a question. Um, yeah. Is there anything specific to those that might be left-handed? Anything that left-handers need to consider while at the table or anything along those lines? I'd say to try to, if you can be a little proactive about sitting maybe in a corner or a yeah. spot where you maybe have a little bit more room, but we very much, even with shaking hands, Every, so many things are just done right-handed. And so just, even just be aware, you know, be aware of that. Um, but that's a, that's a really good, that's a really good point. I try to be as proactive with that as possible in your seating and making and seeing if you have, making sure you have some elbow room. Um, and again, we are, we're, we are a lot more relaxed than we used to be. I was always told like elbows off the table, never, you know, don't lean or elbows off the table. But actually if there's not food being served, it's okay to, to lean forward or to rest on the to rest on the table. But again, even with that being left-handed, I'd make sure you have make sure you have some room there. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead and put them in the chat if you have any questions. Um, I don't know, Carmen, if you talked about this, one other thing that comes to mind, especially, you know, I think about um, when I first started in career services back in 2008, I actually had to go through um, and interview over lunch. And that was the first time that that had ever happened to me. 
And I know one of the things that I thought of in that moment was about the check and how do you handle the check situation? So can you talk or speak to um, that at all if, if our students are in that situation? Right, absolutely. So ideally, if the expectation would be that you pay your own way, one, I think that would say a little bit about the organization because you mm -hmm. they invited you to this interview. Right. And they then it's usually then the expectation that they pay. And so it doesn't, you, you may not even see the check on the table depending on the restaurant they, the um, host may have taken care of it and you might not even see the check arrive at the table and that's fine too um but i think um just making sure you're following following up right away with with a thank you uh with a thank you card as far as as far as that goes but truly if that was the expectation i'm they should let you know ahead of time um but typically nine times, more than even nine times out of 10 that they would be covering, they would be covering the check. Okay, it looks like we've got a couple questions coming in. So one question is, um, you know, what if you're invited to a reception with, you know, alcohol, wine and beer, can you drink one glass and try to hold it for a while? Like what would be some recommendations if you are put in a situation where alcohol is, is more prominent? Right, and I think it's a little bit different whether it's an interview or a network or a networking event. Yeah. Either way, I would be very mindful about what what alcohol it is, and 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 if if it appears, and if you're comfortable with that, and some people just do not drink, and that's and that's fine too. Truly, right. ordering something non-alcoholic is absolutely just fine. So don't please don't feel like you have to just because other people are. Um, but if you're in a networking event and it just it's a little more of a casual setting, I would stick to one, and again, just know how it impacts you. Um, yeah, no more than one, and uh, kind of yeah. pay. Just pace yourself and again just kind of remember you know why you're there and it's really to make those connections to learn more about people just always be curious about what people are um what company they're with and be curious about what they're doing and um it's a little bit more about that than the than the alcohol and the food and the hors d'oeuvres and all and all of that but yeah Perfect. good question awesome looks like one other question's come in about um will this be available to watch again and review yes we are recording it Chelsea, do you want to put in the, um, can you put in the chat to our YouTube channel? Because we can definitely post it out on our YouTube channel. And so then that way folks can watch it. You will also, all participants will be getting a survey uh, regarding the event as well. So please check your email and complete the survey. We really appreciate your feedback and want your feedback so we can continue to provide events and, and um, networking opportunities and workshops and things along those lines that you guys are interested in and continuing to modify our presentations as we need to. Absolutely. Other questions? This is just one other weird question that I kind of have. I'll just kind of keep going for a few here. Um, you know, what if you're in those situations where, you know, you suddenly maybe don't feel well? Well, you know, I've had that happen where, you know, you go out and about or you're feeling okay. And, you know, what if you're at a your supervisor's house or maybe you're been invited to um, a dinner at a restaurant and, and maybe all of a sudden you just feel ill and not feeling well. Well, how would you handle that situation? No, absolutely. I think um, one, not, tr not trying to push it and <laughs> right. I mean, I think that, I think sometimes there's a little bit of pressure there. Like, Oh, maybe it's just nerves or maybe, you yeah. know, it broke truly if you're not feeling well, it's completely fine to just say, you know what? I am, I am so sorry that things, but again, it's one of those things that's just out of our control. And yeah. so, um, and just acknowledging, just acknowledging that, apologizing and saying, you know, what, love to do this again or at a different, a different time or a different venue as far as that goes. When you're feeling better, doesn't necessarily have to be over, over a meal if whatever's most convenient, but, um, but I would, I would, I would acknowledge it and just not try to, not try to push it. Not try to yeah. Um, but again, just be gracious and then, and then, and find a, find a pretty smooth exit with that, but that it happens. It happens. And I think, um, again, how, how they respond will also tell you, you know, how do you see yourself in their organization either, you know, as well, you know, it's a two way, yeah. it's a definitely two way street with that. Right. Looks like we've got another question about, are there any specific dishes to avoid, you know, something that might be more messier to eat or something on the menu, you know, like nachos or sloppy joes, you know, something that might be right. a little bit more challenging. That's what would be advice good. do you have around that or does that even matter? That's a really good question. Like I mentioned, we're we're a lot more relaxed than we used to be. And so there are things like a hamburger, whatever, if it's a finger food, it truly is a finger food. But I would be aware of particularly like anything with a sauce, 
yeah. the marinara. If you're if you're having you know if you have a nice you know light colored blouse and then you order something with mar with marinara for as an example, um, I would I would go with something that you that you've had before. You feel comfortable you feel comfortable eating, um, as you know. But um, I would sauces and and things like that would probably be what I would watch out for the the most. Um, but you could if you're really in a position where you're like oh I'm just not I'm not sure ask ask the host what do you recommend you know what do you recommend mm -hmm. and then and to kind of get maybe some some ideas but um but as far as you know there are certain dishes that are that are messier than others um i would avoid i would say please try to avoid licking your fingers that is just kind of one of the things you want to you want to try to avoid <laughs> so many things anymore are finger foods but um that's one of those things where you definitely want to you'll definitely want to use your use your napkin and not and not like your fingers but um, yeah, you watch anything with different sauces. Yeah. Um, looks like we have another question of what if there's something served at the meal that you don't like or that you couldn't eat? If you had an allergy to certain foods, how should you react in that situation? Absolutely. Um, I would say um, it really, and it does, it kind of depends if it's a preference or if it is an allergy. So for example, if you're going to an interview and they say, we're going to, let's go to a seafood restaurant. If you have an allergy, that would be an okay thing to say right up front. You know, actually, I have a, I have a, an allergy to, to shellfish, and that's probably, you know, that would be an okay thing to say right up front. Um, there are, I don't think there's really that expectation, especially if there are, you're sitting down for a four course meal or a five course meal that you eat every single bite on your on your plate. That's just not an expectation. Sometimes you might you may notice that they're they're bringing things out for you, and then sometimes you may have an opportunity to order yourself. And so I would, again, stick to things that you, that you know. Um, you can kind of even, and not that I would recommend necessarily playing a little bit with your food, but you can kind of move things around on your, on your plate, find some things that you would like on your plate, but not, um, if it's something that you know you can't eat or you won't eat, that's, I think that's fine too. Just not drawing attention to it, I think, will, is the, is the yeah. big thing. Yeah. Um, if it's winter, what do you do with your coat? Sometimes they'll check it at the restaurant for you. Uh, or you can set it the back on the back of your chair. Either if, if they if they offer it, if they check it for you. That's that's even better. It's one less thing to to maneuver around. Yeah. Okay, perfect. That's so far all the questions that have come in. If anybody else has any questions, please put them in the chat. Carmen, thank you so much for taking time out of your afternoon. I know you've got a lot going on. Um, looks like we've got one more here. Should you leave a tip even if the interviewer pays for the meal? Nope, all that should be completely taken care of. That's very, gen it's very generous, but they've got all of that, they've got all of that taken care of. So that's, yeah, good question. Y'all are a generous, generous group, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Really nice. These are really good questions coming into the chat. I really appreciate everybody's engagement of asking all these wonderful questions. This is great. Absolutely. I will tell you, I think sometimes we can easily get caught up and, and maybe even hit a little bit moment of panic of, oh my gosh, what do I do? Um, but I'll tell you, Emily Post had this quote, and I'll, I'll share it with, with you all as we, as we wrap up here, that she had said that manners are a sensitive awareness of the feelings of others. If you have that awareness, you have good manners, no matter which fork you use. So again, at the end of the day, you grab the wrong fork. If you're not drawing attention to it, nobody at the table, they may not even notice. So just right. keep, keep rolling with it, and it's, it's going to be fine. Um, but I would, I definitely want to take this opportunity to wish you all the best as you're as you're um, interviewing and as you're moving forward and so thank you all for thank you for having me i really appreciate it absolutely carmen we appreciate you taking time to do this wonderful presentation for us this was great information um everybody look for it on the youtube channel if you want to rewatch it or look for certain aspects of the presentation and if there's anything else that the career services center can do definitely reach out and let us know yes thank you for hosting awesome. this thank you thanks guys thanks carmen Thank you all. We got a lot of thank yous coming into the chat, Carmen. Oh, that's great. I hope they enjoy yeah, it. Everybody's, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So very good, a lot of good stuff coming in. Most are popping off here. There they go.